Yo, welcome back to Urban Street 420. I'm your host, 40. Today we are going to do a craft. We're not gonna make this, but this is what is inspiring the video. I will show you on the other camera. This is a coaster I made with some uh, coins, and then I poured some resin and added a little bit of, I don't remember what I used for the coloring for this, but uh, anyways, I thought, you know what? Why don't we do one with some cannabis seeds, right? I thought maybe that would be cool. I'm gonna, I also have some coins here, so we're actually gonna do four coasters. You can see right here, I have four different molds, right? So it doesn't matter what molds you use. You can get molds like this on Amazon. You could make your own molds if you want. That's a little bit more in depth. If you guys are really curious, I could show you how to do that. But uh, anyway, you normally do not need to spray a mold release unless you've used the mold a lot, right? Uh, also, if, maybe if you have a stubborn resin. I sprayed these because these are kind of old molds and I thought better the safe is sorry. A light spray will make it so they pop out of the molds when they're cured. So. Which resin should you use? I'm using uh, this resin called Dipoxy. It's from a German company, and uh, I, I buy it on Amazon over here, and it's worked great for me. I use it to do uh, to uh, seal my paintings. I use it to make different crafts, stuff like that, etc. You could use whichever one you want. For example, this company Smooth On makes a resin as well. There's a lot of different resins out there. You have to follow the instructions, right? So if you look on this resin, we'll show you on the other camera, you'll see that right here, it says A and B, right? So this is the A, and we need two parts A to one part B. Other resins may require like a 60-40 mix or a 90-10 mix, or it depends, right? So you need to follow the instructions of your resin, what, how much to mix, and it's basically a two-part situation. So there's part A, part B, you need two parts A, one part B for this particular resin, right? So we're gonna mix that up, and you can color resin a lot of different ways. Number one, you can use alcohol ink. I have alcohol ink right here, and uh, alcohol ink will color it while keeping some level of transparency. You could use mica powder, for example. You could use acrylic paint, however, acrylic paint does not color it evenly, right? And you should probably water down the acrylic paint first, etc. But there's a lot of different ways you have to experiment. For this uh, video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it with alcohol ink, right? I've got a couple different scales over here because you need to weigh the resin to find out what is, how much is part two parts and how much is one part. So why don't we do that, right? I'm going to take this scale right here, oops, and I just moved the camera and I am going to move things over. I also have some glitter here. You could put glitter in your resin as well, and then that will make it shiny, right? You could put other things, like we are going to put these, these are seeds from a watermelon uh, uh, plant that turned male, and so we have all of these seeds, excuse me, and why not use them in a project, baby? So, if you've already made one of these, you can take the coaster that you've already made, you can weigh it, and then you find out exactly how much resin you need. I'm not sure. I think these are like 100 grams of resin each for the big ones. The small ones, let's say they're 50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour 300 grams of resin, and th I think that will be enough. You'll also notice right here, I have like a little silicon mat. You could probably see on the other camera, and this silicon mat is to protect my area, right? You'll notice it doesn't totally fit. So probably I'm going to have it off the mat, but the thing is, if your resin comes off, after you've poured it onto your table, for example, you are gonna screw up your table. You could probably tell by this table, I have another table over there, they have problems because I'm always working on art and stuff like that, and I don't have a woman beating me for like screwing up the tables, right? Because I've totally screwed up the tables. Luckily, my girlfriend is understanding. Plus, I bought this table, so. <laughs> anyway, so let's uh, let's go, right? I'm going to start the scale right here. Let's switch to the other camera. I'm going to take one of these cups, right? And with that cup on there, I'm going to tear it out. Tear it out means set it to zero, right? I wanted to grab a paper towel because we're going to need the paper towel to wipe this as we pour. So I'm going to take part A, and we said 300 grams total of resin, so we're going to put 200 grams, this is easy math right now, 200 grams of part A and 100 grams of part B. And you might be asking yourself, why is the, the, the jug for part A smaller? It depends on which sets you buy, I buy more than one, and so sometimes there's a little leftover of one even though they're meant to be a certain number, right? Anyways, I'm babbling, yo. So, this is 201 grams of resin, right? 
Again, it doesn't have to be totally exact, but you definitely want it to be as close as possible, meaning that I've, uh, it says 201, 202 grams. Do we need to put 100.5, for example? No, we don't. We put 100 grams of part B, which is the hardener, or if we end up putting like, um, if we put 105 grams, that will be okay too. You just want it to be very close, right? Now, it, it, sometimes, depending on the resin, some are a little more finicky than others, right? All right, so we've got 300, well, let's just put another splash, right? 302 grams total, which means we put 101 grams of the hardener. I think that's very close to perfect. Anyway, once we do this, keep in mind, this resin is creating a chemical reaction right now, right? So when you mix these two uh, different uh, solutions together, I don't know if solution is the right word, someone will probably correct me, but uh, when you mix these two together, what happens is the chemical reaction starts to taking place. Different resins will have different uh, uh, working times. So the working time for this is around 45 minutes, but it also depends on the humidity and temperature of your environment. I'm gonna show you on the other camera, I have lots of different colored inks. Let's try to pick a green one. Let's hope that it's open. This one is a kiwi color, it says. Oh, it's definitely open. It just went everywhere. This stuff stains, huh? so that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna do a little squirt inside or a couple squirts aside. And now I'm gonna put this cap back on and we have totally, my, my hands are gonna be green for days, huh? This alcohol ink just stains and it stays, right? Maybe if I go get some alcohol to put on my fingers, that would fix it, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. And if my hands are green for a couple videos, <laughs> going forward in this week, it is what it is, right? I look like the Grinch at the moment, right? Christmas is too far away for me to play the Grinch, so I'm just gonna be a grouch. <laughs> I'm not even funny, yo. So, okay, let's move the alcohol ink out of the way. I'm gonna yell at, let, yell at it later. Be like, why did you make me green? We're gonna start stirring, right? Now, if we look at this and say, hey, this is not green enough, we could always add some more. Maybe let's try a different ink, right? I, f I hope this one doesn't explode as well. So we put a couple squirts of this one. Ah, it's the same one, the, the culprit. This is the kiwi. Anyways, so we put a couple more squirts in there. You'll notice it's a bit greener. And I, the problem is my hands are tinted, so I don't know if they're like wet or dirty, but anyway, so. This is uh, now looking a bit better. Now, when you're mixing this, it's very important to, to get the sides of the cup, et cetera, whatever vessel you're using. I'm using a plastic cup because I plan to throw it away. I know that's not the most environmentally friendly, but it will make it so I don't have to clean this, right? I'm also using a tongue depressor. And again, the reason I'm using that is because uh, this is a single time use. If I used a silicone spatula or something to stir the resin or some type of silicone tool, you could clean the silicone tool with alcohol after the fact, isopropyl, and then you could reuse it. But this, it makes cleanup is such a pain with resin that if I can do it in a single use situation like this, I do it and I know somebody is gonna hate me for saying this or whatever, but anyways, in bigger projects for my paintings and stuff like that, then I end up using bigger receptacles that I clean and I also use like a, a silicon spatula that I then clean and reuse, but we're being lazy right now. So, you can, use, you can put whatever you want in these, right? We are going to take a bunch of seeds, and I don't know how many seeds I have here, and we're gonna fill like the bottom of this with some seeds, and then we're gonna take some seeds and put it in here, right? Then we're gonna use everything that's in there. It looks like there's not just seeds, there's other weird things in here, but it's fine, right? Now, we're just gonna try to move them around, lay them out, because once we pour the resin in, where the stuff is, is where it's going to stay, right? Something like this does not have to be perfect. I'm gonna take this off the silicon mat. I gotta decide what I'm gonna take a chance with, because the silicon mat's not gonna hold all of this. So, Let's do the big ones because that's gonna be more resin. Maybe these smaller ones we can move in front. And yeah. And the reason we, we don't want them hanging off of this silicon mat is it would probably angle it and this stuff is self-leveling. So if you angle it, it will be a problem. Let's go ahead and take some of these coins. These are one cent euro coins. You could use whatever you want. One cent US, one cent wherever you're from, etc. And all I'm gonna do is try to place them so that they're all close to each other. They don't have to be touching. And again, if I wanted to stop right now, right? By the way, I'm not still stirring this and it's okay because like I said, this particular resin has like a 40 minute 
uh, workable time, meaning that it's going to be in this liquid form for like 40 minutes. After that, it's going to become very like a honey-like consistency or thicker, and at that point, you're not going to work, uh, be able to work with it anymore, right? So, but we've got time right now. All right, we're trying to make this pretty, and maybe we're only going to have enough coins for one of these, right? If this video gets... Uh, 5,000 views in the first month, I will give uh, one of these coasters away. I will pay for the shipping. I will ship it to one of the people that comment on this video. So if you like this and you want it for free, uh, like the video, share it with your friends. And if this gets to 5,000 views in the first month of it being uploaded, I will ship it to one of the people who comment on this video. So also make sure you comment, right? Say whatever you want. Say hi. Tell me where you're from. Uh, Tell me what you're doing this week. I don't know. Say whatever you want. Talk to me, baby. All right. So, again, this is not like I have an exact pattern. I'm just moving these around. I'm going to stop talking, and I'm just going to focus on this. Huh? All right. Now, we don't have very many coins left, but to show you on this other one, I'm just going to put a few coins in to show you it doesn't matter. You do whatever you want, right? So I think there were six coins on this particular one. I'm trying to make it in a circular pattern where they're evenly spaced. And uh, I don't know if I'm succeeding. But anyways, right? Now, we can add some glitter to this. Uh, I think there's a little. This is gold. The other one is yellow. Let's say I think this is almost out. But let's go ahead and put this glitter in here. And again, there's not that much. But that's okay. Because you don't want to add that much. This, by adding a little bit of glitter to this, it's going to just let certain parts of it sparkle, right? When the light hits it, etc. Again, not necessarily necessary. This is a, a judgment call on my part. If you want to leave it out, you can. If you want to leave out the alcohol ink, you could leave that out. You could also use other colors, obviously. If you do not put any alcoholic, alcoholic, alcoholic ink, <laughs> alcohol ink, and your resin is a clear resin. This is a clear resin. When it dries, it dries clear, right? Then it would look like this, but it would be clear with the coins, right? If you were making that. <laughs> and I was actually looking for that mold. I couldn't find it, so we went with these. All right, so you want to make sure you're scraping the bottom, right? And I'm scraping the side. I'm holding the cup. I'm turning it. And the reason I'm scraping the sides of the cup is because you need to make sure everything is mixed. If these two parts don't come in contact with each other, they don't create that chemical reaction, which in turn doesn't, will then part of it will be sticky or it will not harden or cure properly, et cetera. So do not skimp on the mixing. In fact, this is your first time doing it, mix for like five minutes. I'm not gonna mix for five minutes because I'm, I've done this so many times that I'm pretty good about making sure everything is touching. What I mix, I, I make sure I get the sides and I, I never have a problem, huh? All right, so let's do, let's go ahead and pour, right? We'll pour in the bigger ones first. And it's moving the seeds out to the sides, unfortunately. So what we're going to do, I think, is we are going to get like a toothpick or something. And we are then, because the coins are heavy, so the coins are going to stay down, no, no problem, right? And we're pouring this until it gets to the top. You don't want it to overflow, but you want it to go to the top. So I'm watching, that looks pretty good right about there. So we'll stop right there. Now, mind you, it will uh, shrink or contract this, uh, your final product by a couple percent, right? Every resin's different, but maybe this contracts by 4% or something like that. So uh, keep that in mind. You don't wanna go over the edge, because if you do, you're gonna have a problem, right? It's gonna go on the table like this is too high. <laughs> it may end up going over the edge, so I'm gonna be careful. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to pour from the out, like I'm going around the outside of it so that it hopefully keeps the seeds in the middle, is, which is, it was doing that until I poured more. Anyways. <laughs> okay, something like that. And we're going to pour this in and we are probably going to put the, the rest. You know, I think we poured almost exact, like this is 300 um, grams and probably 320 grams would have been better, but uh, we could, of course, at this point, pour more resin, right? But I think it's going to be okay because if the coaster is not as tall, tall as it could be, I think it's going to be okay. What do you do if you get the resin on your hands? I did not, by the way, and probably it's a good idea if you've never done this before, use gloves, right? Uh, I don't use gloves because, like I said, I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times, maybe thousands, right? So I'm not a beginner when it comes to this. But if you are, 
use gloves because if you get any of this on your hands, you're gonna be sorry. And how can you deal with it? If you do, go to the bathroom really quickly and take some alcohol. Soap and water is not gonna get it off your hands. You need to use isopropyl alcohol. Once you get it off your hands, then you can use soup and water afterwards, right? So like I said, with this one, with the seeds, what we're gonna to try to do is we are going to try to press them down and move them around. Now, by the way, this is not gonna become like a more solid mixture for a while. And probably, I don't know if you can see on this camera right here, there's a drop that spilled outside. I'm gonna put this stick right there. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. Now, it's not that uh, worrisome that I got a little drop on the silicone mat, because the cool thing about the silicone mat, and that's why I have one here, I should be using a bigger one, is that if we get any resin on it, when the resin hardens, you'll be able to peel the resin off the silicone mat, no problem, right? Now, like I said, uh, this is gonna go through a, a phase. Right now, it's very liquidy, as you can see in the camera, right? And if I don't do anything with these seeds and I just leave them sitting on the top, they are going to dry that way, or this is gonna cure that way. They'll be stuck to the resin, they'll be in it, but they just won't be on the bottom. Whereas the coins, I don't know if you could see, they are on the bottom. And so when this cures, it will look like this. So this was done in this fashion with the coins on the bottom sitting like this. Pour the resin, coins stay on the bottom, so they're right here, right? Whereas the seeds, it's doing something different. Now we could have done two different, we could have done something else, right? What we could have done is we could have taken um, a little bit of resin to get like a layer of it going. Once we pour that layer, we wait like two hours, three hours, something like that. And then this becomes like a sticky tar. At that point, we could have put seeds in the sticky tar and it's not really sticky tar. I mean, it's just like sticky tar, right? We could have then pressed the seeds into the resin that was partially hardening and then we could have poured more resin on top and that would have kept them in the middle, right? More work, we didn't do it this time, but just letting you know that is a possibility. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna grab something to show you something else you need. All right, so I grabbed this torch, right? This is like a torch that you would use for the kitchen, like a creme brulee or make something like that to, to burn sugar or anyways, you can light a cigarette, don't light it close to your face, this thing's super hot, you'll burn yourself, you die, right? You might not die, but just be careful with these things, huh? It's refillable with uh, butane and what we can use this for is, I don't know how well you could see on this camera over here, there's little bubbles on top. You could use a toothpick to try to pop the air bubbles, but it's better with a torch and you want to move quickly. Notice I didn't leave it in one place and just go like this. If you burn the resin, it's gonna let off a toxic fume that is gonna damage your lungs. And if you do this a lot, it's a good idea to use some type of breathing protection, have windows open, etc. which I would normally have my door open so the fresh air is coming in from outside, but I'm recording the video with the door open, you're gonna hear too much of the noise. So let me show you. All right, so let me bring this uh, GoPro closer so you can check it out. And this is what they look like currently, right? So what I will probably do is wait a little while, a couple hours for this one and for the other seed one to get a little firmer and then I will try to poke the seeds in. That may or may not work by the way, right? So we put this camera back, hopefully where it was. I don't know if it's off or not. This may or may not work, right? To get these seats to sink in because I don't want them just sitting at the top. Now, if they're sitting at the top, it should be fine. Technically, the coaster should still work. If we flip it and have the seeds on the bottom, I don't know how it's gonna look, if it's gonna look cool or not. I would rather have the seeds uh, in the middle of it, but, and again, the way to uh, have achieved that is not to have been lazy, make this take a lot longer, put one layer of resin, wait four hours, etc. Now, I'm not gonna show this on camera, but I'm gonna tell you that in the course of the next hour or so, I'll do this one or two more times, if I see any bubbles. Because the bubbles that may be in there are gonna rise to the surface, and the, this taking 24 hours to cure is part of that, right? So probably depends if these things harden because it's in the middle of the day right now. Maybe by late tonight, I'll be able to record the last part of this video by taking them out of the molds, but within 24 hours, they should be hard. They may be hard a little sooner than that, but they will be at full hardness within seven to 28 days for this particular resin. When I say full hardness, the difference between day one's hardness and day 28's day hardness is very similar.
right? It's just it will reach its max hardness at that point. And again, this stuff is pretty durable. It's not like you're gonna break it. Now, if I put it here and I smash, it would probably break it in half. But I mean, you could drop this, it's, it's versatile, it's useful. And again, you could put your, it's a coaster, right? Or it could be a cool little gift. Anyways, guys, I'll be back when we pop them out the molds. Again, you're not gonna see me hit it with a torch and you're also not gonna see me try to press the seeds in because I don't know if that's gonna work and it's not that big of a deal. And like I said, all I'm gonna do as I'm showing you on this camera is pushing them down, right? And you'll notice that they don't wanna do anything at the moment, but that might change as the day changes, right? Or as it starts to firm up. So again, dropping right there. And whenever I touch it, probably I need to grab the torch, go back, cause I may have made some air bubbles, etc. Guys, I'll see you in the next part, baby. All right, so it's the next day. I'm wearing the same clothes for continuity. Also, whatever, I just woke up, yeah. So, uh, I took two of them out of the mold yesterday, right? I took this one and this one. I'm gonna show you on the other camera, right? So one of the things, well, first, before I show you on the other camera, let me say this. I got distracted, I was working on something else, and I didn't come and hit these with a torch again. So on this particular one, there's a couple air bubbles. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So if you don't pay attention and go back with the torch, they can form. Now, it only happened on this one, right? The other thing to note is because I got distracted, I didn't come and press the seeds down until it was too late. <laughs> so when I say it was too late, when I came to press the seeds down, this, this was not hard, but it was so sticky that it wasn't, you weren't able to push it down. Otherwise you would totally ruin it. So anyways, the seeds are on the top, but I'm gonna show you how this looks in two different ways. And the, the coaster could be uh, like this, or it could be like this. Now, if the coaster is like this, the seeds are on the top, you could feel them, there's some texture. And so putting a glass, I think would be fine. It just gives it a little bit of texture as there's no texture on this side. However, on this side, it looks cooler. Let me show you on the other camera, right? So this is what the seeds on the bottom, this view right here. And if we turn it over, this is the view with the seeds uh, here on this side, right? So again, I think it looks pretty cool, huh? Let me take it with this blue mat just to show you with some type of background or something. I don't even know if that makes it look better. <laughs> anyway, let me show you the other one. This is what the coins, now the, this one on the coins, what's really interesting is usually resin will cover these coins, like it will go underneath them. These coins right here are exposed, right? There's a little exposure, excuse me, there's a little exposure here, which means resin didn't go underneath them. Is it a big deal? No, it's not. We could have the coaster like this where the coins stay on the bottom. And if so, there's a little lip, right? If we don't sand it. So I think, again, this is a cool little coaster. It's not a fail. Let me show you taking these out. Remember, I sprayed these with mold release, so it should be pretty easy to take them out. And all I'm doing is like pulling up on the side. And if these weren't totally hard, then they would be bendable, right? But these are totally hard. So when I take this out, put the mold off to the side, you can see now, the side where the seeds are is this side. I don't like it as much that way, but if we turn it around, look at this, right? I don't know how well you can see on this camera because there's light back here. So maybe if I pick this up, just to create some type of backdrop for it, then you can see it better. And I think that looks super cool with the seeds like so, huh? So let's put this back down. And again, maybe, maybe this one, we have it with the seeds facing down. This one, we have it with the coins facing down, right? I don't know. Anyway, let's open up this one. And this one I think for sure came out the coolest, but right here, look, with the white on it, you'll see that there's two bubbles. There's one, one right here, one right here. And I caught it too late, right? And the reason I caught it too late is I actually did pop the bubble. One of these bubbles is popped, but because it had already hardened to a certain point, uh, they didn't, uh, it didn't like uh, re-level and, and get rid of it. Anyways, let's pop this out. And again, popping out super easy because I sprayed this with mold release first. And again, this one has the same problem as the other one. Resin did not get, you could feel the coins actually, which is funny because on my orange one that I showed you that was the inspiration to do this, you cannot. Now, keep in mind, a little bit of texture is fine because if you're putting glasses on this, it will help you move the glass if there's some kind of texture. So at the end, I think this came out super cool. Let me show you uh, first like this then we'll turn it around. You can see from this, uh, this way. Now, obviously from this way, you're seeing the resin first and the coins are in the back. This makes the coins look a bit darker, right? Whereas here, they're in your face because number one, the resin didn't cover everything. Let me show you with the backdrop here. 
I think this looks super cool. Anyways, guys, what do you think? Are you gonna make one of these for a project? You can find molds on Amazon all over the place, right? So what mold you use is entirely up to you. And let me show you one more thing, right? Look at the difference in thickness right here because I didn't put as much resin in the, in the one with the seeds as I did with the coins. Look at the difference in thickness. So anyways, be aware of all that stuff, guys. And now at this point, of course, I could weigh these, but the thing is, if I weigh these with the coins, then I should subtract the coins from if I made another one to find out exactly how much resin I used, right? Because I just used an arbitrary number of 300 grams, which I thought from memory, was correct and it was pretty close it was should have been 320 probably anyways guys gals everybody i know it's a different video but i want to do some craft stuff with you guys too i know how to do all kinds of weird crazy things right anyways guys gals everybody i'm so tired i want more coffee like share subscribe you know the deal baby till next time